Stations of the Cross for the Second Sunday of Lent by Reverend Dick. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Luke chapter 2 verses 34 to 36 Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thought of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Jesus must have felt so alone with all these people, yelling and screaming at him, looking for a friendly face on the crowd. He sees his mother. She can't make the hurting stop but it probably helps to see that she is on his side, although hurting that she is suffering with him. When I was a child, sometimes I felt like too many things were going on. Other kids picking on me and calling me names. I would look around me for a friendly face and for the help I needed. Generally, that was my mother. As an adult, I sometimes feel overwhelmed by many things. Life is so competitive, and I worry so much about my future and those who have some control over it. I need to remember that being an adult does not mean having to solve every problem all by myself. I need to look around me for a friendly face, for the help I need. Can you really imagine this happening? This must be the peak of a mother's selflessness, to give up her son. Even if she knew what the outcome would be, it was still a loss. It was an inexpressible anguish, a suffering with him in perfect sympathy. The weight of sadness that she was to endure, and there was so little she could do to help him. The only contentment was that she could be with him and comfort him. This is often a mother's and father's sorrow, the loss for a time of their children. People have their own cross to carry to the top of their own Calvary. On the way, they need the affection, sympathy, security of their family, who perhaps, like Mary, can do so little to help. The fifth station, Simon of Cyrene. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Luke chapter 23 verse 26 As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and they laid a cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Have you ever visited a place and found yourself unexpectedly witnessing a great event with crowds of people? What a shock it must have been for Simon, finding himself in a city jammed with pilgrims, seeing this horrific spectacle of a badly beaten man stumbling as he was forced to carry the beam of his cross on the way to being crucified. 
we don't know whether Simon had any knowledge of Jesus prior to their encounter on the road to Golgotha. It's likely that he knew nothing about the suffering man before that moment. The Simon watched in horror. All of a sudden he found himself pressed into action. The Roman soldiers, recognising that Jesus didn't have sufficient strength to carry his cross by himself, seized Simon and demanded that he carry the cross instead. No doubt Simon was hesitant, fearing that he might end up sharing Jesus' fear. But surely he was first of all angry and afraid. This is often my reaction when I'm pilloried in any way, anger and fear. Angry that someone has doubted my word, afraid that perhaps I'm not right after all. Angry because my little pedestal has been upset, afraid that I won't be able to get back on it again. Angry with the foolishness of others who don't or won't hold the same views as me. Afraid that I may be made to look more foolish than them. Yet he knew enough not to provoke the soldiers. So he took the cross as ordered. We don't know much more about Simon than this, since he disappears from the biblical record at this point. Although Simon only helped to carry the cross of Jesus and was not actually crucified, he nevertheless illustrates the theological truth found in the letters of Paul in the New Testament. In the letters to the Galatians we read, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. When we put our faith in Christ, we share in his death, not by literally dying, but by dying to sin. <clears throat> our old self is crucified, so that we might be set free from our bondage to sin. Therefore, we are alive in Christ who lives in us. Therefore, in a sense, we ought to identify with Simon of Cyrene, who found himself a surprise participant in the crucifixion of Christ. This is especially true since many of us became Christians without really knowing what we were dying to our old selves so that we might live anew in Christ. We were pitched a gospel of salvation and eternal life without the end result of a call to servanthood, sacrifice and death to sin and self. So it was only later in our Christian pilgrimage where we discovered, like Simon, that we were expected to be crucified with Christ. Unlike Simon, however, we aren't forced to pick up the cross of Christ. Jesus invites us to follow him. Even though he is our Lord, he doesn't force us against our will to join him. Rather, he beckons to us, calling us to take up our cross and offering abundant life in return. As he once said to those who were interested in following him, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will be saved. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Matthew chapter 25, verses 35 to 40. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. 
naked and you clothed me, sick and you visited me, in prison and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, in so far as you did this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. While witnessing Jesus' death march to Golgotha, it would have been easier to remain static and indifferent than to be moved by charity. It would have been less dangerous to just sob within the, the, to cry aloud. It would take more than an ounce of courage to be near the convicted Jesus in the presence of the Roman soldiers. However, a pious woman from Jerusalem dared to step out from the crowd and give Jesus her veil to wipe his holy face. By the time Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus, Peter denied him and most of the apostles faded away. Veronica dared to manifest her fear. She felt helpless and couldn't even find a way to alleviate Jesus from suffering. She had nothing to offer but her love and a simple cloth to clear out the spittle, blood and sweat from his face. Veronica's simple gesture of love was authentic, selfless and unconditional. Then the Lord returned her cloth and his image was impressed on it. Miracles do happen when we dare to love. Our expression of love doesn't have to be complicated. We can express love in the simplest yet most effective way that we know. But most of the time, we have so many doubts and fears that are proven to be useless anxieties. When we focus on love, life becomes simple and uncluttered. This is a simple act of charity, but splendidly heroic and uniquely rewarded. I don't have the chance to perform acts like that. Indeed, I'm foolish if I think I can. This is part of my trouble, that I daydream all the time. I wonder what I would have done. Would I have behaved like Veronica, or Simon, or Peter, or Judas? But such wondering is fruitless. All I need to ask is, whether I do here and now behave like Veronica? If I do, reward is the same. I receive the imprint of Christ on my life. And some questions for you to ponder in the coming week. How is your family? How is your family being there for you or not on your journey? And who has helped you carry your crosses or burdens in your journey? who has shown you compassion along the way. So let us pray. Merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.